Okay, the last talk of the session is a new framework for distributed submodular maximization by Rafael Barbosa, Alina Enne, um, Huey Wen, and Justin Ward. And Rafael is giving the talk. Thank you. Uh, so I'd like to first start by uh, defining what uh, submodularity. Uh, I'm assuming uh, most people here know, but uh, it's a property of set functions. So uh, there are a few equivalent ways of defining uh, such functions. Um, perhaps the most intuitive one is through the notion of diminishing returns, which is uh, as we grow our set, the gain of adding an extra element can only uh, decrease. Uh, so in other words, if we have uh, sets A and B, uh, A contained in B, uh, the gain of adding uh, an element X to A uh, uh, must be a, at least the gain of adding the same element X to B. Okay, so uh, as motivation, let me talk about some uh, examples of some modular functions. Uh, so for instance, covered functions are some modular. Uh, uh, in this case, we have uh, our ground set is a collection of sets. And the value of the function is the number of uh, each set covers a number of points. And the, um, the value of the function is the number of points uh, covered by the sets we've chosen. Okay, so in this example, we pick those uh, two lighter uh, sets. And uh, the two cover uh, 12 points. So another example is ad allocation. So uh, in this case, we have users and we have advertisers, and we want to uh, each advertiser uh, pays uh, is uh, willing to pay a submodular function for a subset of uh, advertisers or of users. Sorry, uh, and we want to find <coughs> the partition of the users uh, that uh, maximizes the revenue. A uh, third example is a data summarization. So in this case, we have a collection of elements. Uh, and we have also a similarity function between uh, every pair of elements. And we want to find a small representative summary uh, in this uh, data set. So this is a tiny images data set, which contains a huge uh, million uh, images. And say we want to find a some of these images that uh, cluster uh, this data. So that's one that can be modeled uh, as a submodular maximization problem as well. So the key problem we are uh, interested in here is uh, we want to maximize a submodular function subject to uh, some constraint that can be uh, cardinality or matroid. Okay. Uh, so what are uh, known algorithms for, or how can we go about solving such problems? Uh, so perhaps the most uh, natural or intuitive uh, way to solve these is through the greedy algorithm. So the greedy algorithm runs like this. We have our entire data set, and we compute the marginals uh, on top of our current solution. Okay, let's say that these are the marginals. We pick the element with the, with the largest marginal. And we include in the solution. Uh, and now we recompute the marginals uh, on top of the, the current solution. We again pick the one that has the, the largest gain. And we proceed like that for the third element until we uh, we've reached a solution. So, okay, uh, greedy uh, is a is very simple, uh, but remarkably, it's been shown already in the 70s that it performs uh, quite well for uh, monotone functions. Namely, it achieves a constant factor approximations, and uh, Nimhauser, Nimhauser, Volsky, and Fisher showed. Uh, that one can achieve uh, one minus one over e um, approximation for 
uh, monotone function, and uh, one can also achieve uh, a half approximation for uh, a matroid. Sorry, the first one is for cardinality. The for matroid constraints, one can achieve a half approximation. Okay. Uh, so in addition to that, uh, there's also a continuous version of the uh, read the algorithm, which I'm not going to define here, but essentially it optimizes uh, an extension of uh, the submodular function over the constraint polytope. And if we use this continuous version, uh, under matrix constraints, uh, one can achieve one minus one over E uh, approximation uh, ratios for monotone functions and one over E for uh, non-monotone. Okay, so these results are uh, quite good, uh, but there is a problem. Uh, greedy is inherently sequential, which makes it probably unsuitable for uh, large data sets. So that raises the question, can we parallelize uh, these algorithms? Uh, one first approach to that problem uh, was to, uh, well, we considered our, our entire data set and we randomly partitioned this data onto the machines and we run greedy on each machine to get a solution. Now, we group all the solutions on one machine and run greedy again. And that's the, the output of uh, our algorithm. So, uh, uh, one can show that if greedy achieves a C approximation, then this randomized distributed greedy uh, in two rounds achieves a C over two approximation for uh, monotone functions. Uh, a bit worse for uh, non-monotone. And also, uh, it's worth mentioning the work of uh, Mirakni and Zadimogadam, uh, where they essentially show that if uh, each machine outputs a larger number of elements, uh, then one can achieve a better than half approximation under uh, cardinality constraints uh, for monotone functions, among other results. So, okay, we, we have this result, but that leads to another question. Can we parallelize these algorithms with almost no loss? So here we're losing half uh, from greedy. Can we parallelize these algorithms uh, with almost no loss? And the answer is uh, yes, we can if we run for a few more rounds. Okay, so the main result we've uh, obtained is a framework for parallelizing a class of algorithms, which I'm going to talk about in a minute, uh, with almost no loss. So uh, more formally, if uh, an algorithm in this class achieves a C approximation, then this distributed framework achieves a C minus epsilon approximation in uh, O of one of our epsilon rounds. So before I go into the details, what uh, is the, the framework? Uh, so again, we, we have our entire data set. Uh, we randomly partition the data on the machines. We construct solutions using chosen algorithm on each machine. We again group these uh, solutions on one machine. Uh, run the algorithm to obtain another solution on that machine, and then now we, we add the solution to a core set, okay? And then we go for the second run uh, where we consider the, the whole data set again. Uh, we randomly partition this data 
we proceed like the same. But now uh, we add the core set on top of the, the elements sent to each machine. Okay? And now we run the same algorithm to uh, obtain a solution on each machine, group them uh, on one machine, run the algorithm again, and I'll add that solution to the core set, okay? And we proceed like that over, we grow this core set over, uh, over one of our apps and rounds. <coughs> uh, and we can show that by then we're going to have a good solution so that uh, if we run our algorithm on that core set, uh, we're going to obtain uh, a good approximation. Okay. So, okay, uh, what is the, uh, so now let me talk about the class of algorithms that, uh, that I was talking about. So, um, what, what property do we want in the algorithm? So we take inspiration from greedy and continuous greedy. And how do we capture at an abstract level the, the greedy behavior? Or how, how does greedy algorithm uh, make choices? Uh, so one answer to that is that greedy makes uh, consistent choices. Uh, and what do I mean by that? So um, let's see the execution of, well, uh, a property of the greedy algorithm uh, so let's say we have two disjoint sets, A and B, and uh, let's say that greedy running on A union, the first element of B, has the same output as greedy running on A alone. And the same happens for all elements of B. Then what one can show is that greedy running on A union B is going to have the same output as greedy running on A. That is, greedy is going to uh, leave the elements of B out uh, consistently. So if we have these, then we have the last one. So at a more, more generally, at an abstract level, uh, let's say that uh, we consider our algorithms to uh, output also a relevant set. And what is this relevant set? So in the case of greedy, it's the, uh, it's the solution. But in the case of continuous greedy, it's the support of a fractional solution. Okay? And if we have these, so if greedy doesn't include in the set of relevant elements, uh, any of these uh, elements of B, then we want the solution of our algorithm running on A union B to be the same as the solution of, uh, of the algorithm running on A. Okay? So in other words, th this is the property we require for, our, for the algorithms. Uh, so uh, essentially this is satisfied by greedy and continuous greedy, but our framework holds for, uh, for all uh, algorithms satisfied. So in other words, uh, we have a framework for uh, parallelizing uh, any consistent algorithm with almost no loss, and we also recover, uh, so for the most part of the talk, I was only talking about uh, results for uh, monotone functions, but we're also able, the, the framework is also able to recover uh, vast approximation for uh, both monotone and non-monotone functions. So, okay, uh, I'm not going to talk about the details in the proof, but one intuition uh, so what is the intuition behind the, the analysis? Uh, 
the main intuition behind the analysis is that each round adds uh, some elements of op to our core set. So that if we if we run if we grow our core set over uh, all of one of our epsilon rounds, uh, in expectation we we have either found a C minus epsilon approximation in one of the one of the executions uh, in one of those machines, or uh, that core set is going to contain all of them. And then when we run on uh, a machine, we're going to have uh, a good approximation. Uh, okay, so let me uh, summarize. Uh, we have uh, proposed a framework for parallelizing sequential algorithms for some modular functions uh, with almost no loss. And we also get that the techniques uh, lead to uh, fast sequential algorithms for non-monotone maximization subject to matroid constraints. And uh, an improved two-round approximations for uh, non-monotone maximization subject to uh, hereditary constraints. Uh, yeah. uh, thank you. One thing we need to worry about is the number of elements that are going to uh, be included in the core set. So we, we, we kind of need to restrict uh, the, the value of a solution. So, so essentially, double greedy could uh, output a uh, large number. So uh, yeah, we need to worry about communication and storage. Uh, in expectation, yeah. 